megaliths are among the world's most fascinating ancient wonders. These massive stone structures, think Stonehenge, the massive stone circles at Karnak in France, and dolmens across Europe, are staggering in size and scope. Each one represents a feat of human ingenuity and determination, constructed thousands of years ago, long before heavy machinery or advanced technology existed. But who built them, and why? For centuries, historians and archaeologists have speculated about these builders. Were they priests, astronomers, or simply communities with a deep spiritual connection to the land? Were these massive stones erected as places of worship, sites of burial, or even tools for astronomy? Despite the mystery that surrounds them, one thing is clear. These structures required a sophisticated level of planning, coordination, and, above all, effort. In recent years, scientists have made stunning discoveries about the people behind these megalithic structures. By analyzing ancient DNA from human remains found near these sites, researchers are piecing together the identities and origins of these ancient builders. Through groundbreaking genetic research, scientists are tracing the lives of the people who gathered, shaped, and arranged these monumental stones. And what they've found is surprising. The builders of Europe's megaliths may have come from a specific group, carrying a shared genetic ancestry that stretches across much of Europe, back to ancient Anatolia. Join us as we uncover the genetic secrets of Europe's ancient megalith builders, exploring their origins, their society, and their impact on the world that followed. The history of megalithic structures spans thousands of years, beginning as early as 4500 BCE. These structures are found scattered across Europe, from the iconic Stonehenge in England to the Standing Stones of Brittany, France, and even as far as the Mediterranean Islands. These monuments represent a unique period in human history when societies across Europe, despite having no written language, were working to erect massive stones, forming complex sites that would stand the test of time. But why did so many societies, spread across a continent, decide to build in this way? Scholars have long believed that these megaliths served ceremonial or spiritual purposes. Many of the stone structures align with celestial bodies, such as the sun and moon, which hints at possible astronomical knowledge. This period of monumental building marks the Neolithic, or New Stone Age, a time of immense change. During this era, farming and settled life took root in Europe, creating societies that were more permanent and rooted than the nomadic hunter-gatherer groups that came before. Yet, despite the range and spread of these megalithic sites, their exact origins remained unclear for centuries. How could people who had no formal means of communication or record-keeping have come together to build so consistently across such vast distances? Now, with the help of genetic research, scientists have started to piece together answers. They are finding that these megalith builders were not isolated groups, but rather a distinct population that may have shared common ancestry. This genetic evidence is helping to answer the age-old question of who these people were and why they dedicated themselves to such monumental construction projects. The real breakthrough came when scientists were able to extract DNA from human remains buried in or near these ancient megalithic sites. The science behind it is nothing short of mind-blowing. With advances in ancient DNA analysis, researchers can now study fragments of genetic material from human bones that are thousands of years old. And what they've discovered is that the builders of Europe's megaliths are part of a genetic line that likely originated with early Neolithic farmers from Anatolia, an area that is modern-day Turkey. These early farmers migrated into Europe around 7,000 years ago, bringing with them a lifestyle based on agriculture and settlement. Over time, they mixed with local hunter-gatherer populations. But the remarkable part? Despite intermingling with other groups, there's a consistent genetic signature among individuals buried at megalithic sites. This suggests that megalith builders formed a unique community, bound by kinship ties that were shared across different regions. This genetic similarity found in burial sites across Europe points to a population that may have been highly connected, even across long distances. These were people who maintained strong cultural and possibly familial ties as they moved westward. 
It's almost as if the builders of these monuments saw themselves as part of a larger collective, with shared beliefs and practices that transcended individual villages or communities. It's a new lens through which we can see them, not just as isolated tribes, but as part of an interconnected network of societies with a shared purpose. So, who were these early Neolithic migrants, and how did they spread across Europe? Tracing their path has been like piecing together a prehistoric map. Genetic evidence suggests that these builders came from populations originating in the Near East, primarily Anatolia. Around 6,000 to 7,000 years ago, they began moving westward. Some traveled by land through the Balkans, while others moved along the coastlines of the Mediterranean. Eventually, these waves of migration reached Western Europe, where the tradition of megalith building took root. As these Neolithic farmers migrated, they brought with them not only their agricultural skills, but also their traditions and worldview. They encountered indigenous European hunter-gatherer groups, and over generations, the two groups began to intermingle. This fusion of cultures resulted in a genetic profile distinct to Europe's Neolithic era, especially in populations associated with megalithic sites. In some cases, the descendants of these early farmers formed communities that worked together on massive construction projects, creating the monumental structures we see today. The spread of megalithic structures suggests that as these communities settled and interacted, they maintained some level of cultural continuity. Each stone monument, in its own way, reflects the journey and beliefs of these ancient builders. And it seems likely that their shared origins in Anatolia influenced not only their DNA but also their cultural practices. This genetic and cultural continuity is part of the story that scientists are still unraveling. Interestingly, DNA evidence is giving us more than just a geographical map. It's revealing a glimpse into the social lives of megalithic builders. Analysis of human remains at megalithic burial sites has shown that these communities were likely organized around family groups or clans. Some megalithic tombs, like those found in Ireland and Spain, contain remains of related individuals, suggesting that kinship ties played a significant role in the organization of these societies. This family-centered structure isn't surprising when we consider the level of coordination required to build these monumental sites. Constructing a massive stone structure would require significant labor and cooperation. It's possible that family groups pooled their resources and worked together on these projects, perhaps as a way to honor ancestors or mark their place in the world. The importance of burial sites in these cultures also indicates a deep respect for the dead, suggesting that these communities believed in some form of life beyond death. The consistency in burial practices across different regions suggests a shared cultural or religious belief system among megalith builders. While each site has its own unique characteristics, the similarities are striking. These practices reflect a level of cultural unity that's rare for societies of this period. The genetic evidence of kinship ties, combined with these shared burial traditions, paints a picture of a people who were both deeply connected to their past and dedicated to creating a legacy that would endure. One of the most fascinating questions surrounding the megalith builders is how they managed to share and transfer knowledge across vast distances without a written language or advanced transportation. Think about it. Similar construction techniques appear from Spain to Sweden, suggesting that some form of communication or knowledge transfer was at play. How did they manage to build with such consistency? Scientists believe that these builders might have shared construction knowledge and techniques through migration and trade networks that spanned across Europe. Archaeologists have found evidence of materials, such as rare stones and seashells, being traded over great distances, indicating that these ancient communities were far from isolated. Objects from distant regions have been discovered at megalithic sites, hinting at a well-connected network. This means that ideas, techniques, and maybe even skilled builders themselves could have traveled from site to site, sharing knowledge on construction methods and stone alignment principles. There's even a theory that some of these communities were proficient in early forms of sea travel. Given Europe's sprawling coastline, it's possible that megalithic builders used rudimentary boats or rafts to navigate across waterways, spreading ideas from the British Isles to the Mediterranean. Imagine groups of people making long, 
perilous journeys, carrying not just goods but also knowledge about how to arrange stones for solar and lunar alignments. Such exchanges would explain the widespread, consistent methods seen in megalithic construction. This interconnectedness hints at a European Neolithic community far more sophisticated and interconnected than we might have assumed. By examining these patterns, scientists now see megalithic Europe as a hub of knowledge exchange, a place where people didn't just live in isolated communities, but were part of a larger, dynamic network. And it's thanks to the spread of these ideas that we have some of the world's most iconic structures today, each one a testament to the knowledge and ingenuity of Europe's ancient megalith builders. Around 2500 BCE, something remarkable happened across Europe. The genetic and cultural landscape began to shift dramatically. New groups, identified by genetic markers associated with the Amnea culture from the Eurasian steppe, started migrating into Europe, introducing new customs, technologies, and social structures. This influx of people brought significant changes, not only to the genetic makeup of the population, but also to the way societies organized themselves and expressed their beliefs. This new wave of migration began what some scholars call the Bronze Age Transformation. As these steppe origin people settled, they gradually integrated with the existing Neolithic farmers, including the descendants of the megalith builders. They brought with them new tools and techniques, such as horse domestication, metalworking, and perhaps new forms of social hierarchy, which were quite different from the kinship-based societies of the megalith builders. As the cultural landscape evolved, the tradition of constructing massive stone structures began to wane. Megalith building was eventually replaced by smaller, more localized forms of construction and burial. Though we don't know exactly why, some believe that the influx of new customs and the introduction of metals and new farming methods might have shifted priorities. Over time, the megalithic tradition faded, though traces of it continued to influence subsequent European cultures. The decline of these structures marks the end of a unique chapter in Europe's prehistory. Yet, the legacy of these builders didn't vanish entirely. Elements of their culture and belief systems seem to have been absorbed into the new societies that arose in the Bronze Age. And in some ways, their legacy lives on. Even today, these ancient stone monuments capture the imaginations of people around the world, standing as silent witnesses to a once-thriving civilization that left its mark on Europe's landscapes and, through DNA, in the people themselves. The study of ancient DNA is revolutionizing our understanding of prehistory. For the first time, scientists can look directly into the genetic past, revealing secrets about human migration, community organization, and cultural development. This technology allows us to bypass the limitations of traditional archaeology, which often relies on interpreting artifacts and environmental clues. Now, we can decode the DNA of people who lived thousands of years ago, providing a much more personal, human view of history. One of the most powerful aspects of genetic research is that it can reveal connections that were previously invisible. By studying the DNA of individuals from megalithic sites, scientists have uncovered not just the movements of people, but also the ways in which different groups interacted and influenced each other. The genetic link between Europe's megalith builders and the Neolithic farmers of Anatolia is a perfect example. It suggests that ancient people were not as isolated as we once thought, but were part of a network that spanned entire continents. These discoveries are helping us understand the origins of Europe's population and the spread of cultural practices like monument building, agriculture, and possibly even early religious beliefs. DNA studies are showing us that the people who lived during this era weren't just anonymous figures lost to time. They had rich, complex societies, and they left a genetic legacy that has shaped the people of Europe even today. What's remarkable about this research is that it connects the modern world with the ancient one in a tangible way. Some of the genetic markers found in the DNA of Europe's ancient builders can still be traced in modern populations. It means that, in a way, the descendants of these megalithic builders walk among us today. Understanding this link isn't just about studying history, it's about recognizing our own place within that history. Through genetic research, we're able to look back and connect with our ancient ancestors in ways that are both scientific and deeply human. So, 
As we stand in awe of these megalithic structures, we're not just looking at stones, we're looking at a story written by some of our earliest ancestors. Genetic research is more than just a tool, it's a bridge to the past that connects us to our shared human heritage. If this exploration of Europe's megalith builders has captivated you, imagine what else is waiting to be uncovered. So, next time you see a megalithic site, remember, it's not just an ancient monument. It's part of a legacy that, in some small way, belongs to all of us. If you enjoyed this journey into ancient Europe, consider subscribing to learn more about the stories that have shaped our world. And let us know in the comments what other mysteries you'd like us to explore together.